Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Basement Machinist. I was going through some of Mr. Pete's old videos, as he suggests that we do, and I found one of him building a solenoid motor. And I thought it was pretty cool, and decided I wanted to make one myself. However, I'm going to do mine a little bit different. I want to make mine variable speed, and I'm going to use an Arduino to accomplish that. I was looking around for some other videos and I found one by AVE. Now if you have not subscribed to AVE's channel, you need to do so because the guy is freaking hilarious. But he wanted to do the same thing, build a solenoid motor and make it variable speed. Now, like me, I, I'm using the Arduino, however he was using a Texas Instruments launch pad. Uh, basically the same thing. There's not much difference between the two. They'll both get the job done. However, there's a couple things wrong with the approach that he was taking. He was trying to make the motor variable speed by using the launch pad to change the timing of the solenoid firing. Now there's one big problem with that. And that is, let's pretend for a moment that my little steam engine here is a solenoid motor. He was changing the timing with the with the uh, launch pad. However, he the solenoid was receiving the same voltage every firing. That means that the shaft was being pulled into the solenoid at the same speed every time it fired. So even though that he's going to be changing the timing with the launch pad, the speed at which the motor spins is going to be hard to see. Because what it's actually going to be doing is the solenoid of fire, the motor would spin fast, slow down, and then it would fire again, it would spin fast and slow down. <coughs> if he could even get that far. The next problem is there was nothing telling the launch pad what position the motor was in. So what was likely to happen is that the solenoid would fire out of time. So it would spin in one direction and then the solenoid would fire out of time, like say maybe here, and cause the motor to spin in the opposite direction. So the operation of the motor would be very erratic. The proper way to do it is to one, have some type of switch telling the launch pad what position the motor is in. And we also need to create the variable speed by changing the magnetic flux that is produced by the solenoid. The greater the magnetic flux, the faster the engine is going to spin. The less magnetic flux, the slower it's going to spin. Now I did find another video um, on the channel Folly Towers. And this gentleman made a solenoid motor and made it variable speed. However, he did not use uh, any type of you know, like Arduino or the launch pad or anything like that. He built the circuit from scratch. I, I'll put the circuit that he provides in his video on the screen. And as you can see, he used a PWM circuit, a latching circuit, and a Schmidt timer to accomplish uh, the variable speed of the motor. Now, in, in the schematic, I have uh, part of it circled. All of that that's circled is going to be replaced by the Arduino. So our circuit is going to be much smaller. We'll be able to make our motor a lot more compact and the circuitry will be easier to hide. So let's head over to the computer, get the Arduino programmed, get some components on the breadboard, and get this thing working. All right, first off, I just want to say that working with electronics is pretty easy. As a guy over on the AV channel says, electronic components are like Legos. 
you put them together in the right order, you supply a voltage, chances are it's going to work properly. However, one mistake that beginners usually make is they try to go from nothing to the finished product in a single step. And you can't do that. If you do, you're pretty much guaranteed failure. What you need to do is think of the entire circuit and what you want it to do and break it down into its individual operations. Like for instance the circuit that we're building today it needs to accomplish three things. One, we need to fire the solenoid. Two, we need to use a potentiometer to control the flux of the, the solenoid. And three, we need a switch that tells the Arduino what position the motor is in. So what we need to do is break those up into the individual pieces. We need to figure out which one is the most fundamental. And in this case, the most fundamental and simple part of the circuit is to have the Arduino fire the solenoid. Now unfortunately I do not have a solenoid built for this motor yet. So I'm going to use LEDs to represent the solenoids, which is a pretty accurate representation because if you remember what we're trying to do is change the magnetic flux of the solenoid. And the way you do that is changing the voltage that's supplied to it. And when you change the voltage, you're changing the current. And the current determines what the magnetic flux will be. And the same goes for this LED. The more voltage we apply to it, along with the resistor that's in series with it, the more current that will flow through the LED, the brighter the LED will be. The less voltage, the less current, the dimmer the LED will be. So the brighter the LED, the more magnetic flux in the solenoid, the faster the engine is going to spin. The dimmer the bulb, or the LED, the less flux, the slower the engine will spin. So the LED is a pretty accurate representation. So the first thing we're going to do is wire our LED into the solenoid, or sorry, into the Arduino. Now we need to do it with a resistor, a current limiting. If you don't use a resistor with a LED, eventually your LED will burn out. So I've got the LED wired to ground through the LED or through the resistor. And then I'll connect the other lead of the LED to a PWM pin on the Arduino. Now the Arduino has six PWM pins. Number three, five, six, nine, ten, and eleven. <clears throat> and it's arbitrary on whichever one you want to use. I'm just picking number five because for the circuit that I'm building it's going to be convenient with uh, the one here and then we have a regular pin here that we'll use for the switch later. Now that we got the LED wired, we need to tell the Arduino what to do with that LED. And for that we'll head over to the computer and we'll, we, I have the Arduino IDE set up and this is where you'll write all the programs. Now you got to keep in mind that the Atmega chip that's in the Arduino doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of memory uh, for storage. So you need to keep your programs as small as possible. <coughs> Typically in when you're writing a program you can do everything in this loop program here. However with the engine that I'm building I'm planning on using two solenoids. So inside the loop I would have to write a program for one solenoid and then I would have to write the exact same program again for the second solenoid with a few variable changes. And that's going to make the program quite lengthy. It will not fill up the memory that's on this chip, but we want to try and make it as small as possible in case we want to add to it later. So in order for us to make it as small as possible, 
we're going to use a class. Now a class is just a way to define objects in object-oriented programming. Let's see, so this will be solenoid drive. Okay, and then you can think of a class as defining an object. Then inside the class, we have to set the characteristics of the object. In the case of the solenoid, the only characteristic it has at the moment is the pin that it's connected to. And in this case, it's connected to pin 5. So what we'll do is we'll create an integer and we'll call it solenoid pin. And then that's all we need to do for that right now. <coughs> now that we have our pin defined, we need to create a function that's going to set the pin. So we'll do a solenoid drive integer pin. And then in here, we're going to set the solenoid pin variable to the pin that is set in the function. Now we have to tell the Arduino what that pin is, whether it's an input or an output. And in this case, we're driving the solenoid, so it's going to be an output. So in order to do that, we do pin mode, then we'll do solen solenoid pin output. And then that's all we need to do for that. Now for the next part of the class, we need to create the function that will actually make this LED work, or the solenoid work. In this case, we're going to, we'll just make the LED blink for now. So we need to do an update to the solenoid that will make it blink. So we'll do a void update. And then inside here, we'll write the code that will actually tell the LED to blink. So we'll do a digital write soul annoyed pin and then we're going to set it to high. High meaning on. And then we'll do a delay so that we can actually see, um, see it blinking. We'll do a delay of one second. Then we'll do a digital write solenoid pin low, turning the pin off. And then we'll do another delay of one second, just so that we can see what's going on. <coughs> now, at the moment, we need to, now that we got the program, the class set, we got the variable set that tells us the characteristics of the LED. We define the pin and what type of uh, what type it is, an input or an output, and then we wrote our function that will make the LED blink. Now we need to define our actual object. And the way you do that is outside the class we'll do solenoid drive solenoid 5 and 5 being the pin on the Arduino that the solenoid is going to be connected to. Now down here <coughs> now the way that the programs work is the Arduino will read what's inside this loop and it will continue to do what's inside this loop until you turn it off. So we need to tell the Arduino inside this loop that it needs to go up here and do all this class stuff up here. And the way that we do that is we do solenoid update. And then that's all you got to do. And the Arduino will continually read this 
come up here and do all this function up here and cause it to blink. So it'll read this, then it'll read this part, and it'll see that it's pin 5. It'll come up here, set the pin mode, and then it will do the function to update the LED. It'll do the digital write, high, delay, digital write, low, delay, and then it'll come back down to the loop and start all over and go through that process over and over again until we turn it off. Now that we got the function set, we can upload it to the Arduino, and I've got an error. Let's see. Oh, it's set to private. <laughs> What we need to do <coughs> is set it to public. This is because um, when something is public, that means it can be read by something outside the class file. Without it being public, I would have to move. I don't know if it would work or not if I move this inside the class file. I don't know if it would work that way or not. But we'll make it public so that it can be read outside the class file. Now we should be good to go to upload it. And we're done. And as you can see, the LED is blinking at a two second cycle. On for one second, off for one second. And it'll continue to do that until we turn it off.